Hello, I'm Charlotte, and this is Dewpoint O on the couch. As always, if any of you out there would like to chime in, please send us a question on our Twitter at Dewpoint O. Today, we have a very special guest that I'm excited to share with all of you. So let's get right to it. How do you like to be introduced? Hi, I'm Amy, and I am a Hatch Green Chili connoisseur and enthusiast. The story of how you got here is fascinating. Would you share that? Oh, of course. Uh, so I'm originally from the Southwest, and in the Southwest we make something that's called green chili, which comes from Hatch Green Chilies of the Hatch Valley in New Mexico. Uh, green chili is sort of like a, a stew, salsa verde sort of, you know, sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, is this like guitar? As in, are there tutorials I can watch on YouTube? It's really nothing like guitar, no. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, what's your five-year plan for sort of bringing green chilies into the, the broader world? Oh, my five-year plan, first of all, is to eat as much green chili as possible, um, but also to import it, uh, you know, out east because it, it's not really a known uh, delicacy up here. Can this be monetized? Oh, it can. In fact, um, I, I brought a can of Hatch Green Chili that uh, has become very popular in, in you know, certain stores here. Mm -hmm. uh, this jar was $11. It's quite a lot of money. It's quite expensive, yes. Mm -hmm. I'd like to go back to something you said earlier, um, in importing and also eating as much green chili as possible. Could you elaborate on that? Oh, sure. So, um, you know, over the past few years, uh, after I moved out here, I, I really missed green chili and the flavor of home. So every time I, I go back, um, I, I make it a point to go to the grocery store and pack my suitcase full of as much green chili as possible, uh, you know, and, and bring it back. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and then therefore I can eat it. Won't it all just fall apart? I mean, I make sure that I wrap the jars carefully so they don't break. Um, I also uh, do it myself sometimes by roasting and peeling the chilies and mm -hmm. shipping them back with dry ice. Mm -hmm. Does it bother you when less talented people take up green chili um, eating or or importing um, and make more money with it? Oh, it's it really makes me angry. You know, in Brooklyn they o open a new restaurant and they're selling these burritos for like $15. Oh, does this make you more or less angry? Because I would be furious. It makes me furious. That's, oh, that's just awful. Have recent events altered the way that you approach uh, green chili eating? Recent events. Uh, I mean, it is very warm out, mm -hmm. and uh, traditionally you eat this as a warm sauce. Mm. So I have been eating it cold. Oh, can we see how you would interpret that artistically? Eating cold chili? Oh. Okay, sure. visual art, music, dance, or writing, does it have to explain itself to provide its own context? Can you elaborate on that? Sure. Um, should all of the tools for enjoyment and understanding a work, should they be in the work itself? Or is it acceptable for, uh, for a work to sort of expect the audience or the listener to bring in a certain amount of their own knowledge and research into the experience so that the work doesn't have to fill everybody in all of the time. Hmm. Um, if I relate it back to chili, green chili, 
I would have to say that, you know, it's sort of like someone tasting it for the first time and not really understanding where it comes from uh, and, you know, building up their tolerance to heat mm. and then appreciating it more. So in that sense, I feel like art is, you know, you can bring, you, it can stand alone, but you can also learn from it. Hey, that's very wise. Um, this is all very fascinating, but I see that we have a little bit of a guest deciding to join us. Please excuse me. Sir, sir, we've spoken to security about this already. You're not allowed in the studio. Thank you. I apologize for that interruption. Um, I've, I've actually been having um, issues with my uh, with the locks on my doors not working, so intruders will will just barge in. I can't even get the door to shut fully anymore. I'd love to get your take on this. What's a possible solution that I could could have? Oh sure. Um, you know, New York City. This happens all the time. Faulty doors, faulty locks, locks that just you know don't work. Intruders. Mm -hmm. Intruders, um, I would say just leave it. You know, sometimes you sometimes you get a nice guest that becomes an adopted house pet. All right, I, I do feel I feel a little bit better about that. <sighs> I'm so sorry, but I'm I'm feeling a little bit bored. Maybe maybe I could try my hand at at a musical interlude. And, I can do something simple, and you can do something complex. Oh, I have a great idea, actually. Oh, um, I, I brought a prepared statement. Uh, it's actually a poem. By all means. Yes, and I, I thought maybe uh, you could interpret it with me in real time. Yes, of course. So this poem is an old New Mexican poem, uh, referring to the two different types of chili, red and green. So green chili is, as you saw, green mm -hmm. in color, and red chili is actually just green chilies that have matured and ripened, and they're they're more, um, you know, they're more robust, a little bit earthier and spicier. Um, and in New Mexico, you can ask the question uh, when when you're at a restaurant, they ask you the question, red, green, or Christmas. Christmas mm. would be both, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So this this poem sort of is talking about that, okay? So, yes. <clears throat> Roses are red. Chili is green. Our love will never vanish. Just like tortillas and beans. Musicians. That's true. But before we get to that, let's talk with conviction about something else. All right. Perhaps there's a hobby about which you have strong opinions? I actually, reaching off camera for my hobby, I actually brought my hobby with me today. And my hobby is hand grinding coffee beans. Wow. Um, sell it to me. Well, um, I'm not going to sell this one to you specifically, but it is a great hobby for anybody to get into if you have two arms and hands that grasp. So what you do is all you have to do is put some beans into this top compartment. You have to grind. You hear this great little grinding sound. You just spin it around and around. And then in the very bottom, you'll find that you have some nice new coffee grounds and you can put those in a French press, which is what I use. You can put them in a pour over. Um, you could just eat them raw, but I wouldn't recommend that because that's kind of dry. Hmm. Uh, can we see how you would interpret the grinding uh, artistically? Absolutely.
last musical interlude was clearly informed by our conversation about grinding, um, do you think you could play something purely abstract? Do you think it's even possible? Oh, well, especially since I'm in such a coffee grinding headspace right now, uh, I'm not sure I'll be capable of doing completely abstract performance, but I'm certainly going to try. school, the local paper sent a young intern to interview me. Mm -hmm. um, afterward, the editor actually called my mother and let her know that they were killing the story, like they were canceling it, because I was too boring. Um, so unprofessional. <laughs> yeah, since I've had an appearance in a documentary and two podcasts, uh, and those have also been canceled for similar reasons, what can I do to keep tonight? this interview from being canceled. Goodness. I th I think we I think we'd better play some more music. People really like that. They love musical guests on on talk shows. So let's quick, let's grab your violin before we get canceled. Good idea. Good idea. <laughs>